Welcome to the Bourbon Friday Show. We're talking business and bourbon, and I'm your host, Nick Niehaus. Today I'm talking to Steve Summers, who's the executive director of TEDx here in St. Louis. So, Steve, thanks for joining me. Well, thanks for having me. Of course, yeah, happy to talk. Well, normally I would ask you, you know, what is the company you work with, right? But I think most people have heard of TED at this point. You would think. You would think, right? Would so, think. I guess give us a quick explanation yeah. for those, those of us who haven't heard about well, TED. Well, those of you who haven't. Uh, I find it's about 40% of, say, educated, like co which you would perceive as a college-educated person, have absolutely really? no idea. Oh, no man, because I've been watching TED videos for, feels like a decade. I don't know. Has well, TED been around probably, that long? Or? Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, recorded uh, probably since 2007, so okay. a little bit more. All right. Yeah, makes sense. Uh, but it's been around since 1984. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. And it started out as kind of a dinner party salon sort of thing, and then it evolved over the course of years to being a, a conference mm -hmm. where they would have seven or 800 people in a room. Sure. And through that, they evolved to not having 40 minute talks, but down to the uh, ubiquitous uh, the YouTube, minute. yeah, yeah. kind of segments, yeah. sure. Because uh, attention span is getting shorter. And then TEDx is a local version. We're a licensee of TED. Gotcha. And we're, we've got a region of which we can kind of pull from. And or pull from gotcha. Yeah. So what is the, the region here? So it's, it's kind of the metropolitan demographic area. Okay. You know, like the 2.3 million, the multiple county. Makes sense. So, greater greater St. Louis yeah. area, so to speak. All yeah. right. So that's originally why we picked Gateway Arch to be our, all. each TEDx has to be geospecific in its name. Okay. So as not to create confusion. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, so we can't be like TEDx Midwest or TEDx sure. Missouri even. Okay. Um, so where's the next closest one? So we are what's considered a level one license. It's kind of a bigger mm -hmm. one. The next oh, closer. Oh, so kind of tiers. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. So there are probably a dozen small TEDx's in St. Louis. Oh, really? Like there's a TEDx Clayton. There's a TEDx Maplewood High School, a TEDx hmm. you know, The Loop. Uh, and these are all smaller ones that by their license, they can't have 100. They can only have less than 100 people. I hmm. think they can't charge. I think there's a lot of restrictions. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, but we support all of those. We help them. Interesting. Like with uh, finding speakers, training, marketing. So, but the next one like us would be Kansas City, uh, TEDx KC, cool. which has uh, been around a couple of years longer than us. All right. Yeah. Well, so tell us about you know how the so originally started as TED. How did the X come to be? How did they decide yeah. to start opening these locations? So uh, TED, which is Technology, Entertainment, and Design, just to mm -hmm. kind of retro back. Uh, and so in 2012, I went for the first time to a TED event, and I'd met some of the people who had really kind of forced the TEDx into existence. Okay. So the way it happened, and it, it's, it's kind of fun because it's part of our ethos, is that in 2009, 2010, TEDx is from, I think it was Austin, there was somebody maybe Albuquerque, uh, somebody out of Montana, who was like, you know, we want to do this. Sure. And Ted's like, well, you, you can't do it. Like, we, we do it centrally. And they're like, no, no, we want to do it. We're going to bring it back to our hmm. towns and we're going to do it. And they're like, well, we're not really sure how, do it. we're going to do it next week. Oh, and we're okay. going to do it next month. We're <laughs> going to. It's just happening. Huh? Yeah. So <laughs> then the, the Ted realized, okay, we got to get some rules wrapped around this because sure. we apparently can't stop it. Okay. And it, hmm. For them, it turned out to be just the best thing ever. Yeah. Because it brings the brand right everybody's Makes door. It local yeah, yeah part of the community right and there are people like me with level one licenses there are five six seven hundred in the world easily wow so okay. every every city of any size gotcha has a TEDx. well and that's something i've noticed too when you when you watch the videos on youtube is a lot more of them are labeled as tedx you know as oh. opposed to being from the, yeah. the one main original conference right i'm glad that it's kind of shifting. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, I mean, you're, well, and you're getting to hear uh, quite a few more speakers now, right? Because you got so many more opportunities. Well, so let's talk about that. I mean, how do you guys choose the speakers for the event? So, we've evolved over time. Uh, it, we started out by having uh, a series of mavens, which okay. it was a word I didn't know at the time. It's a Yiddish word, it means like an expert in hmm. a field. Okay. So, we would have different people who are experts in different areas recommend speakers to us. Oh, okay. Right, so it's a good way to find people who are doing uh, creative, innovative, cutting edge sort of things. And what we found fairly quickly is that there, there were really great people doing really great things, but mm -hmm. they tended to be in academics. Okay. And it was really hard to get them to emote or tell a story. Ah, uh, gotcha. Uh, mostly because they already knew what they were doing. Uh-huh. So, um, 
and we have a, a training process that we've developed that's about oh, really? four okay. months long. Oh, wow. That, you know, we work with Coca Biz and we'll train people acting, uh, breathing exercises, body length, you know. Wow. How to, yeah. I there's mean, a lot of prep. Yeah. There's a lot of prep. Uh, 40 to 60 hours. Really? Yeah. Okay. Wow. And that, and not including like home practices. Yeah. Well, that's something I've always like, I was wondered about, I guess, because they, they do seem kind of more rehearsed, more polished, yeah. you know. Because like no some notes, training no podium. There. Yeah, of course. You've got to just memorize your talk. You're ready to go when you get up there. Yeah, sure. and seem comfortable and relaxed when you deliver it. So that's all training. Okay, interesting. Yeah, yeah. and there's a point about not overtraining. Okay. And we don't have enough time to overtrain no, yeah, I mean, anyway. Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> but what we've come to really uh, embrace is the idea that once a year we have an open audition. Okay. So we'll just put it out that we're going to host and we're looking for speakers. Uh, we'll get about, last year I think we had 180 wow. people apply. Okay. Uh, we've got a team that goes, combs through those to see which do we want to listen to, whose pitch. Okay. Uh, and then we narrow that down to 30. Hmm. And then at KDHX, historically, we go on a Saturday morning and we'll list to, listen to 30 three-minute pitches. Oh, wow. Okay. So it gives you an idea, the kernel of their idea, but more importantly, their ability to deliver. Gotcha. So as we can gauge from audience response like standing ovations and things like that that our open audition people do much better than so we still have the maven okay. system of looking for sure and we do have people contact us i've got people con you know people oh, find sure. out what people i do yeah, out all the time right <laughs> so i've come to just say i i don't have anything to do with the process yeah. so here's here's the, my, yeah. the website yeah. or whatever yeah, exactly, right? yeah, exactly. go apply that makes yeah. sense well, so what do you think uh, distinguishes those two? I mean, is it the fact that people had to go through this process that you think makes their presentation think, better, maybe? Well, I think or? that's a good point. Yeah. You know, that they've got buy-in to begin with, right? Sure. They're self-selecting. Gotcha. Um, and the academics, again, I think just think they know how to deliver information, mm, okay. which is very PowerPoint, very very lecture oriented, graphic, right? Exactly, yeah. Graphic heavy. Just not or, you usually don't give standing ovations after no, a college lecture, right? <laughs> you have you to wake really, up and then you leave, you know. Be some really cases. good. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Well, so how do you um so these people are coming in, I mean, one thing I've always thought is interesting about Ted is like the the kinds of topics just seem to be yeah. completely all over the place, right? So, do you have themes for each event, or how do you kind of decide what the what you're looking for? So, we do have themes that uh, the first couple of years I kind of fought against because, like, mm -hmm. it just seemed like it's a marketing thing, right? Sure. Like our next event is called Crash Course. Okay. And it's in a series that we're calling um, Collide of Scopes. Okay. Right. So okay, yeah. we have a marketing firm, uh, Tui Creative. Mm -hmm. It does in kind work for us, so they've created like the the look of hmm. how this season is going to be. And to give you an idea, like uh, working with creatives, so at the beginning of the year, they're like, so we've got this idea, we wanna do something with light. You, you wanna do like hmm. modulation or, you know, like which is, so they, they decided to go with the collide, like through the prism of, and then from that gotcha. to the collide of scopes. Yeah, no, I like is, it, it's right. fun, yeah. So this one is Crash Course, I don't know how or why. Okay. Um, <laughs> But to probably answer the question that you're really asking is that we, we start with uh, sort of a matrix mm -hmm. of uh, a rubric, whatever, of types of subjects. So we don't have a bunch of community stuff or a bunch of sure. or ec ec ecology okay. talks. Or, so we try to diversify. So there's intentional variety yes. of the speakers. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. And the subjects. Yeah, makes yeah. sense. Makes sense. Very cool. Well, so you obviously work with a lot of speakers, um, mm -hmm. probably have some advice. So what, what yeah. would you tell somebody who's looking to, to get into speaking, uh, maybe more as a beginner? You know, they're just kind of getting started. They know this is maybe one of their dreams yeah. to be on that big stage someday. Wow. What, what should they try to do? That's, uh, that's a good question. Uh, I think you should try to become a natural speaker. Okay. I don't know how you do that, but try to be comfortable okay. uh, on stage. Uh, there are a lot of, like, small things that I've learned that I, I find that are interesting. Uh, one of them I, that I think is interesting, I'll do it this way, sure. is the idea of when you're talking to your audience, you look them, you look at a specific person until you're done with a point. And that point, then you can move on to someone else in the audience, mm -hmm. which is a trick that makes everybody think that you're 
really communicating Going to them exactly gotcha as opposed to if you're doing this as you're talking and then you know you're taught to look at the audience but uh, and that's called sweeping actually you don't okay. you don't want to so don't want to do that don't want to do pause that. on people okay. yeah and then very the cool. pause is very important okay the metaphor is very important um, yeah I mean no, there's, there's, a, there's a good. long list but that's good. I mean, I think the idea of even just, I, I like that, uh, you know, you're kind of speaking to one person at a time in a yeah. sense, right? It engages the audience because you think as an audience, yeah, they're speaking to me. Sure. Maybe not at the moment, but maybe you will. Yeah. Well, and I think it's probably helpful in terms of you, you have a better sense of how they're receiving what you're saying. It's true too. Right? So you probably make adjustments yeah. if you need to. Um, we talk a lot in video production about how you need to really be thinking of a specific person because we also communicate better with one person as opposed to oh, a group, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So I think it would probably help there. So, yeah, it's good stuff. Um, well, so tell me, you know, you've seen a ton of speakers. Um, mm -hmm. So maybe we'll, we'll kind of focus locally on you know, TEDx uh, speakers. Who are some of the people that you, do you recommend or what are some of the favorite topics oh, you've seen? Well, one of my um, favorite speakers, and just because I'm a fan of uh, dystopic uh, material. Sure. You know? Okay. Uh, a, a guy named Kyle Ladd, hmm. who was the founder of the Zombie Squad. Oh, okay. So he gave a talk six or seven years ago. He was extremely nervous. His yeah. team didn't think that he could do it. Hmm. And he went through the months of training and he delivered this really great talk, I think, uh, that was premised on the edge. So the Zombie Squad's premise is that natural disasters happen, so you should be prepared for them. Gotcha. So to deliver that message to the 30-something demographic, they used the zombie oh, yeah. model. <laughs> sure. And so his talk was really, it was great. He interweaved the, the genre with, Interesting. Yeah, yeah. yeah, with preparation, like what you should prepare for. Yeah, no, yeah. I I'm, I'm imagine that was very interesting. That's yeah, I just, yeah, and it was really nice because he did a great job. And at sure. the beginning, we're thinking, oh man. Yeah. So, a, little, a little nervous at the beginning there. They, everybody's. Of course, the first yeah. minute or two is so always yeah. kind of uncomfortable, right? We've, we've almost lost a speaker or two. We had to go. Oh, the, really? Yeah, like in the bathroom. Kinda, yeah. Come on, you it's really. Time. It's time. You yeah. get 18 minutes to talk. That's yeah, it, right? Yeah, your time is coming. Very cool. Well, I want to ask you about, um, for somebody who's out there that, that's thinking they may want to get more involved. Yeah. Um, so obviously you can apply to be a speaker, but yes. you guys are also looking for volunteers for events and things yeah. like that still? Yeah. Or how can other no, people, no, how no. Can people it, get involved? I mean. So the, the point of all of this really is to create a community. Okay. And our mission is to create an inclusive and equitable community of hmm. thought leaders. So cool. we try to be very intentional as to our board, our team, our speakers and our audience. Okay. So yeah, if anybody is interested in helping and in, in jumping on, there there are ways through the website, and there are plenty of jobs and little pieces that you know we could always use help with. I'm sure. And yeah. just ideas and you know. Very cool. All right. Yeah. And uh, what web, the website is? TEDxGatewayArch.org. Dot org. Yeah. Okay. Important to know yeah. that. Um, all right, and then in terms of kind of a final question for you is in the next event coming up, give us some of the, the details. Where is it? When even is if, it? Even if you weren't going to ask that as a question, that's how I was going to answer. Well, that's, that's fine. Yeah. I mean, we usually end there, right? You know, what's the plug, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so September 12th at the pageant. Okay. So it's the first time we've had an event at the pageant. Hmm, and cool. so we decided to go kind of E-heavy, kind of entertainment heavy. Okay. Um, and we have... We have four speakers doing TED Talks. We've got one couch interview, which is allowed within our format. Okay. One person being interviewed, and then three elements of entertainment. Gotcha. So eight, eight pieces. Um, the doors open at five. We start at six, and we'll be done by nine. Cool. Yeah. So it'll just be music and thoughts. It's thought kind of just mixed together throughout yeah. the event. And, and the yeah. idea of TED, really, the of a TED event is to it's kind of an onslaught of ideas and different just perspectives keeps going, and, yeah right just kind of open people up to hey this is music i've never heard before i didn't think i was going to like it but interesting yeah so if you're looking to experience new things yes it's a good option for you and we do a lot of times i have people come and say i came for this but this is really what i liked interesting okay yeah. so, so that's nice unexpected it's rewarding. yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Um, and just tickets, they get them on the website or yep. what are they? Uh, Ticketmaster, I think. Ticketmaster. Is, but go through the website. Just go to gateway, TEDxGatewayArch.org and Sounds from there great. you'll find 
find the Everything way. Everything you need. All right, yeah. very cool. Well, we got a couple minutes left, so that okay. means we're going to bring Eric onto the show. And Yay. Eric is the founder of Bourbon Friday, if you haven't met yet. And he always <laughs> has a story. Yeah. He's always got a story about the bourbon. Sure. You know, he so, never tells me ahead of time. So no. what, what, what's the story so this, this is, time? This is Holling Station bourbon by Old Dominic Distillery. And Old Dominic Distillery was started by a woman named uh, Alex Castle. Hmm. And she actually spoke at Te TEDx Memphis. So she's a TEDx speaker, so I thought this was a good plug. And, and certainly, well done. yeah, and certainly uh, her talk was called um, Whiskey, a Cure for Perfectionism. <laughs> and the, the general crux is, is kind of like you can do everything you want to do, everything you can to make that right. But as soon as it goes in the barrel, you don't know how it's going to turn out, which is, you know, even like events. Yeah. You can do everything leading yeah. up to an event, but you don't know how it's going to turn out until it's yeah. right there and then and that's happening. Yeah. Certainly perfectionism, as Nick knows, is a thing I struggle with. Yeah. <laughs> I, was say, I didn't know if it was about before it goes in the barrel or after it comes out of the barrel helping with perfectionism, sure. but it seems like both sides maybe it helps out, right? Maybe so. <laughs> um, well, what, is, what do we got in terms of events coming up this week? Sure. On Monday, Josh Malone, the inventor of Bunch of Balloons, which I hadn't heard of, but apparently it has been like the number one toy for two years. It's a $200 million business. Wow. Yeah. And what it does is you can fill 100 water balloons in 60 oh. seconds. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've seen it like uh, on a television show, like somebody, some family was using mm -hmm. it to do something. Yeah. Yeah. And he's going to be at T-Rex speaking um, mostly about like his journey through that. But he's had multiple patent lawsuits against people, oh. uh, especially the, like the as seen on TV people. Uh -huh. He's had to sue them because they just go and create a product like his. He already off. had the patent. And oh. so, yeah, they're going to be doing a documentary. He's going to be speaking his food and drinks at T-Rex. So Very cool. that's okay. on Monday. And then on Tuesday, I think you have an event coming up. Uh, yeah, we're doing the Real Marketing Masterclass at our office. So for real estate agents in particular, but really any small business owner that wants to start learning how to use video to market their business, uh, we do have a couple tickets left. So you can get those by sending us a message on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> and then on Wednesday, there is the Ameren Accelerator, the 2019 cohort announcement. And Ameren Accelerator is specifically for startups in the energy sector. Mm -hmm. They're making that announcement. I think it's like five or six companies. They get a hundred thousand dollars, 12 week program it and all of that. And that's earlier in the day, and that's at uh, 4240 over in Cortex. Okay. Then also on Wednesday night, there's the Diverse Founders and Funders event by Multipass. That's going to be at Spaces in the Central West End. And um, there's going to be a panel on that. Chisholm, uh, Uche from 630, and mm -hmm. Kylie Summers from Spendet, who've been on the show, are going to yep. be on that panel, as well as Mark Lewis from Biogenerator and Yvette Rodriguez from Cultivation Capital. So definitely go and check that out. I'm sure I'm going to be there. Um, and then on Thursday, Vetra Cafe, this is the next at 4240 event, which is their larger event. They have multiple food vendors, and this is going to be by EdHub, and it's focused on the urgency of equitable education. So all of the programming mm -hmm. is focused around education at that, gotcha. and innovation in education. And then Friday, we're back here for another great Bourbon Friday at Kobo. Uh, we have Adam Stump from Stumpy Spirits right over across the river. Okay. He's going to be here. Um, we're going to be trying some of his uh, some of his products and um, stuff. Yeah. yeah, a tasting episode. Those a tasting are always episode. Our favorite, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was hoping to be on the tasting episode. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> yeah. 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 You, know, you can come on back through and try some of the Stumpies out. That'll be fun. Yeah. So cool. All right, well, Eric, as always, thank you for joining us. Definitely yeah. appreciate it. Uh, Steve, thanks for coming on the show today. Yeah, thanks Had a for having conversation, definitely. Uh, for those of you tuning in, you know, we want to thank you for watching our show here, the Bourbon Friday Show, which we host at Kobo every single week. So thank you so much to Kobo. Thank you to EQ for partnering with us and helping distribute the show. And of course, thank you as always to Vanessa Lobo, my business partner at Connect Marketing, for taking care of everything behind the scenes and always making us look good. Um, thanks for tuning in and join us again next Friday at 4.30 for the Bourbon Friday Show. We'll see you then.